Why do we need steroids? What, what do you think about steroids? Basically, it's performance enhancement drugs, and that's kind of what we need at the PDB because our proteins, they get heavier and heavier, and we don't measure that in pounds or kilograms. We measure it in megadaltons. And actually, yes, I heard some talks. There are some big complexes that may even in a gigadalton range. So we're talking about millions and billions of atoms we need to deal with, and that's what we need the steroids for. Okay, so we have this thing called compressive structural bioinformatics to, to deal with those large things. So the PDB is getting larger and larger. We have no more than one billion atoms in, in the archive, and the number of structures is also increasing almost exponentially. We have now 120,000 structures there, and it's growing by 10,000 per year right now. Um, but that's not all. We also have growing complexities. We're getting larger and larger molecules. So as, as shown here on the scale, going from a small protein or DNA all the way to a eukaryotic cell. Right now, the pro largest proteins we have is like, for example, parts of the HIV virus here. But very soon, we get into a range where you can actually see those molecules under a light microscope. So we're talking about hundreds of millions or billions of atoms <clears throat> that we need to support. So currently, the largest structure in the PDB is the HIV capsid. That's this part of the HIV virus here, 2.4 million atoms. The, mo the largest symmetric molecule is the Foster virus with 40 million atoms right now. So we want to support that basically in a web browser. How do we do that? I mean, you think about what Netflix or YouTube are doing. They're doing compression, right? That's the way you get big data onto a website. So that's our first one, where we take the protein data bank we compress it, let's see, does this work? I don't know if you can see. We take the entire protein data bank, we compress it, we can keep the entire PDB in memory. So this is a very low latency server where we serve compressed data to a client that wants to visualize the data. So that's, that's one use case for compressed structural bioinformatics. The other one is where we take basically the entire PDB, we keep it in memory on a cluster and we can run distributed computing in large scale on, on the PDB, and we're also using this Apache Spark framework for that, as you heard uh, earlier this morning. Um, okay, I don't want to go through the compression strategies. We provide some custom compression to make the data really small. And, and then the data are provided in a file format called molecular, macromolecular transmission format, or MMTF. It's compact. It's for fast network transfer for in-memory computing. It has very extremely fast uh, passing for interactive visualization and large-scale mining. It's completely self-contained, unlike a PDB file where you're missing some information. This has everything in it, including all bonds. It's extensible. Rather than inventing our own container, we're using the message pack container format, which is like JSON, but it's, it's binary. And in addition, message pack has libraries in almost 50 programming languages, so it's very interoperable. And so here are some uh, benchmark results. On the left-hand side, you see the current PDB archive, just the structural data, gzip compressed in MMC format. This is our lossless MMTF compression. If we do a lossy compression, we can get this down all to 800 megabytes. You can have entire PDB in memory on your laptop easily and do all kinds of fun stuff, right? But more importantly, then compression is the speed. So if you on a Mac Mini with four cores, if you want to pass just once to the 120,000 structures, it takes you about 400 minutes. Using MMTF, we can do that in less than two minutes. So the idea is we want to get to interactive speed. We want to be able to do interactive ad hoc analysis on PDB scale interactively. Uh, here's an example using Apache Spark, running some uh, simple calculations here. Um, for example, here we find all C alpha atoms. Here, this is using MMT, MMSIF. This is the new form. We can do it all in six minutes rather than on an overnight job. And how about visualization? For fast visualization, when you do it fast, if, for example, shipping the data, data set, 100 large structures to over the continent to Bethesda takes, I can't see it here, 85 seconds. Uh, using MMTF versus the original form takes 2,400 seconds. In the same time, we can actually ship it over the Pacific to Japan in about the same time. Um, here are some links to the website. Everything is open source and available. So in summary, we have a compressed data format. It's, it enables fast visualization up to 100 times faster. Um, it's available also in big data formats such as Hadoop sequence files. We can be used with Spark. And finally, if you want to get involved, there's a hackathon going on over the last 
next three days. It's in the Dolphin and Asia Room 3. It's in collaboration with the NCBI. So if you want to try out some of the tools, please come there. If you want to learn more about data compression, what we're doing on Monday, I'm talking about the details. If you want to use the code, it's all on GitHub. And finally, acknowledgements. I want to acknowledge the NIH and also our early adopters, including some OBF members, including Bio uh, Python and, and Bio Java here. And do you have one second left? Thanks very much, Peter.